Wall Street's biggest bear is doubling down with claims being made that over 10% fall will happen by January. But does history and the charts support this rationale? Today, we talk about the retail sales data that was incredibly strong, how it pushed yields to the fear of the unknown and could bring the bears back into the market. And of course, what's going on with breadth right now. But really, the question is, as we cover off stocks, commodities and cryptos together, will small caps hold the key? Let's talk about everything together right now. Well, welcome back, everyone, to The Daily Show, where we talk about the macro leading indicators and, of course, the hottest charts. If you like anything to do with markets, remember to subscribe and, of course, smash that like button. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the last 24 hours. NVIDIA was leading the charge to the downside. But what I want to talk about first has to do with Brett, the strength of the market right now. And we shared this over on our Twitter X account. Links in the description down below if you're interested in having a look. And of course, it is that if we took out the top seven, the magnificent seven stocks, would we be actually seeing a very strong market? Well, it turns out, no, we wouldn't. Have a look at this. S&P 500 excluding the top seven versus S&P has not exactly been doing very well. In fact, it's kind of making fresh lows as markets go on to kind of start to make a little bit more of a high. Now, is this something we should be worried about? Well, of course, here are some of the key things that Mike Wilson believes are negative about the markets right now. The first one is that we're stuck within two points. We'll look at this later on today's video, specifically actually for the queues. But basically, we have a trend line on the top end and a trend line on the dot bottom end, and we're stuck within a trading range. If we make a new high, the bulls will win. If we make a new low, the bears are in control, and we could be looking at a much worse predicament. So really, we're trading within a range. And it makes sense to quite a few things that we're seeing going on right now on the charts. Average stocks that are down year to date. In fact, almost all of them are. Without the Magnificent Seven, as we see here before, Realistically, trend lines have been broken towards the downside, and of course, stocks are not exactly recovering well. Here's basically the S&P 500 equal weighted market, and you can see that it's just starting to try to find a bit of recovery, and we'll talk about the key zones for that later on. The same thing's happening on the NASDAQ. Here's the breadth of the equal weighted NASDAQ, and you can see again, without the seven, it's a very different story. In fact, many stocks are struggling under the pressure that the Fed has put on the market. This comes down to a few things, and the biggest one has to do with zombie companies. If money is not being made by these companies, when they go to refinance, how can they pay off their debt? Well, the answer is they can't really. And of course, that's starting to come back and have a bit of a problem. And it's designed that way because, of course, we're seeing a higher for longer narrative in the markets. If you have a look here, these are, of course, the current earning predicaments. And we're actually seeing a blended Ford EPS that's showing us that the market has more to gain, even though you may think, well, on the surface, things look really bad. According to the boffins out there, the market is potentially undervalued at this current stage. What about higher for longer? Well, rate yields just absolutely melted everything in the last 24 hours. And you can see based on this yellow line here that we're back to realistically an all-time high of 2023 in terms of where rates are expected to be in the Ford guidance. This is the bonds market telling us this, not necessarily anybody else. So bonds are now saying no rate cuts most likely until May, June, July of next year. And even when we do get rate cuts, less rate cuts on the horizon. In fact, the terminal rate at the end will still be sitting at around 425 to 4.5%. So not many rate cuts, even if they do happen with possible spikes into 2025. This is a massive difference to where we were only a few days ago. Speaking of earnings, so far, earnings surprise percentage is above the five-year average. And again, we have to put our opinions at the side. The reality is most of these economists were pricing in worse results. So far, the banks are reporting pretty positively, but that could all change in the next 24 hours as we see Tesla and Netflix, the two big tech stocks, starting off. Will we see subscriptions dip? And more importantly, will margins start to get crushed on Tesla? We often know that this can really make or break earnings seasons. And as we go through the next two weeks, we're going to get an incredible idea of whether those percentages stack up. Do also remember that expected options moves are going to be massive. Netflix is going to be a plus minus 9% and Tesla is plus minus 7 So huge moves on the horizon here in terms of what's going on with both Tesla and Netflix. 
For the bulls, bullish percent index, something that's helped us kind of maintain this narrative of strength in October so far has been doing very well. It's a very similar kind of recovery that we saw in March. And for now, it looks like markets are still trying to make that recovery, even in light of breadth being really poor. So let's go through the stats. This is the week of trillions of dollars of options expiration. We're about to hit Vixpiration, which is on Wednesday. So will we get volatility? I think almost assuredly either Wednesday, but most likely Thursday will be a volatile session. 30 up, 10 down over the last 40 years with a very strong bullish correlation this week. Of course, it's only a stat, but it is interesting to look at nonetheless that October tends to hold up pretty well. You can also see here what tends to happen by the end of the year and years such as this, which is a pretty strong return. So if we do get the turn towards the bullish side in October, we usually rally through the November and December periods with, of course, dips being purchased up. Here's a bit of a stat of pre-election years in the next couple of weeks. Sometimes they do fall off, but in general, by the end of October, we've usually seen strength coming back into the markets. Here are the stats with similar years as well, 12 to zero. That's positive bull territory. Now, of course, people like Mike Wilson that are calling for these falls to come through for the S&P 500, they might actually be correct. But the question is, when do we get this recession call? When do we start to see the cracks forming in the economy, which retail sales showed is not there just yet? Here's one sign that could be that problems are starting to arise, and that's US permanent job losses. We're seeing that that's rising back up. Now, of course, it's been rising for a while. So we know about underemployment. We know about the giga economy. We know about, obviously, all these issues going on. And this isn't necessarily a super lead to recessions. But of course, coupled with things like inverted yield, we are starting to see signs of underemployment or people taking multiple jobs, which is helping to kind of support this so-called jobs number we see once every month called non-farm payrolls. For some people, this is good news for certain things. Gold obviously is starting to look a little bit more positive. We reported this in our previous video, so make sure to go back and watch that. But basically, we've had a huge amount of shorters. These are managed money funds. They've been net short and it looks like someone got caught in a massive squeeze. And it probably wasn't many retail traders, as retail traders tend to be more bullish on gold. But yeah, we're seeing pretty strong action out of gold, and it does tend to lead on to around 30% gains over the next coming months if the stats are to be believed. What about big transactions? There was one large one that I think is notable, treasuries, big dark pool transaction. Could it have been a buy? It's very plausible that this is a purchase and someone made that big transaction over the last 24 hours. So look, treasuries are not really a trade as we've talked about. There's a lot of people making huge bets here. Huge amounts of bears and huge amounts of bulls are fighting it out on treasuries. And we'll look at that in charts later on along with our indices and of course, single stock discussion. Let's move over to options and unusual options activity. It was a pretty big day for Nvidia with 4.7% down. In general, the call still came over the puts 1.37 times options volume. The queues continue to be big and really the big fight here, I think, is between the Russell 2000 bulls and bears. 1.48 times 90-day volume average. This has marked around two weeks of incredibly strong trade on the Russell 2000 and it's something we need to be paying attention to. 34.7 million options, 51% calls, 49% puts, still very even between both bulls and bears. Usually we get 39.2 million volume. Expect this to spike up massively over the next coming trade sessions. In regards to rotation before we get into the charts, was there anything that was giving us any hints? Not really. Gold continued to do well. Metals did well. Energy did well. It was actually inflation-based trading. They were the sessions doing well. Usually we see regional banks loving the rate hikes. We see things like metals loving it. We see clean energy loving it. Gold, well, it's doing its own thing at the moment. And of course, energy doing really well. So it was really a rate hike day, basically a higher for longer rotation of money. We've seen that for a few sessions now. Of course, we've got a mixture of defensive sectors such as utilities and staples starting to have the better five-day averages. And semiconductors actually down on the last five days of trade. So again, the best market sector isn't exactly super strong in this current market condition. Now let's look at some market internals. First up, what about the percentage of stocks above their 20-day moving average? That's starting to get to a very key level. In fact, it could be telling us again, October lows are in. 
and it's go time for the Bulls. Even though everything looks net against everybody at this stage, bullish percent index and obviously things such as percentage of stocks above the 20 and 50 are improving. Here's the 50. You can see improvements there. And here is the 200, almost a new high. So we'll set a little alert over here. And obviously, I'll do that after this recording. And this is definitely an area we'll be focused on. You can see it's been a steady downturn for percentage of stocks above the 200 day going down into the low 30s. But if this starts to improve into the 40 area, again, it's starting to say that breadth is improving even in the face of serious adversity. What about the bonds market? It's continuing to trend down. That is, even though the two years up, the 10 year, the 20 year and the 30 year are rising steadily. And that's showing us that we could be getting to uninversion soon. Once we do that, we know that we're on a timer before usually a recession, whether it's a hard recession or a soft recession, is going to be called. Copper continuing to hold the defense level of the demand. So, of course, that's key. Then we move over to treasuries, which is kind of just forming base continuously around this level. And look at that volume. I mean, you've got to say there are bulls and there are bears in treasuries. But what is not kidding is the volume. It is massive. Look at the huge transactions going on. We do also have more treasuries being listed. So do remember that it's expected to increase volatility over the next 24 hours. Be very careful when it comes to this trade. All right, well, let's move over to the Federal Reserve now. And what's the Fed doing? Well, it continues to inject. We're almost at a new high here for the injection in terms of what the treasuries and what everybody's expecting. The Fed doesn't want the markets to go down. It looks like central banks around the world broke something recently because there's no way that these are spiking without something that we don't know about yet breaking in the back end. Dow Jones transportation average, one of the things we're looking at for strength, made new high, pulled back a little bit. Again, looking a lot better on the charts. Home builders holding the lows for now as well. Again, looking good for the bulls in, com in comparison to the bears. If they drop off, that'll be a problem. What about the US dollar? Still in a holding pattern. Could be that we're in distribution, which is something we've been talking about. I'm going to say we're neutral on dollar. You would always say, oh, the trend's up, but I just think this is such a key level. What do you guys think in the comments down below, though? Is this the end for the dollar or is there more to come? At this stage, we're looking for some kind of Wyckoff distribution to stop what was, I think, a 13-week hike in dollar index. USD was being very strong, and that's contrary to what a lot of people were calling on it. Let's move over to gold. Gold is at the trend line on the way down, which you can see here. We've kind of speculated it's in a squeeze and things are looking better. And gold stocks had an amazing day, 1.83% approaching that kind of key resistance where I could see some take profit targeting. We're pretty convinced at this stage that gold's in some kind of short squeeze and we'll be following it very closely over the next three to six months. I think it's going to be a while for gold. Let's talk about US oil. It's going up as expected. We're going towards the target we'd like to see. Now what we can do is we can mark in some alerts. So I'm going to mark this low down here. And what I'm looking for, we'll just get rid of that for a second. What, uh, what I'm looking for is basically something under this 85.30. So we've just made a new high. We're into the supply. We're about to hit our alerts around 88.50 to $90. And this marks potentially a little bit of a peak here for oil. So certainly a critical point now for these markets and something we'll be focused on very closely Let's move over to Tesla. Less than 24 hours now, we will have earnings for this stock and most people are going to be paying attention to this one. I think it's very important. On the small time frames, you'd say that markets just tried to put in a bit of bull, drops to be met by bull demand. So basically things like a 30-minute, 15-minute chart, maybe there's a buyer somewhere here. I'm not going to speculate on it too much. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some of you that say it's bullish, some it's bearish. I'm not going to say I can call it. I don't know whether the even the results are good. I don't even know what the market wants from this stock realistically. So I always say patience, react, don't predict. We'll have an update straight after the earnings call for both Netflix and Tesla. So we'll update the charts as we see fit there. We can make cases for both bulls and bears at this stage. NVIDIA was down and it really brings in more of the argument that we're in a holding pattern here. Remember back in 2020, NVIDIA held for like a nine-month period while doing nothing, even though the rest of the market was going up. So we kind of feel like that's what's happening here. A lot of people are going to call head and shoulders. Obviously, the big line is 402. So at this stage, it still looks like NVIDIA is relatively strong. 
AMD is coming off the bottom of the trend line, as you can see on the way up, and it's coming to that point where you see the resistance. If bulls are going to take control of AMD, this is around the right area. And often they call this a canary for markets. So if it starts to make new lows and we'll maybe mark some of those out and set some alerts, then we've got problems on the horizon. Another one similar to our leads that could be telling us things are weakening. Was it a good day for indices? The answer was absolutely. In fact, if anyone was a member of our private community, you can go back, watch that video, or maybe you would have been there live having a listen to us. It actually played out exactly as we expected. And it was really a bit of a pullback during the day into strength by the end of the session. Now, US 2000 may hold all the keys. Not only was the last 24 hours semi-encouraging for this market, but more importantly, it's what happens next. Do we make a new high? 1810 going to be such a big case for the bulls to gain. If the bears are going to take control of this market, continue to make a series of lower highs, push to a new low, get underneath 1700, close the market on a weekly, and then we've got problems. That's when you're going to see further capitulation, big spikes in the VIX. The VIX may be hitting 25 or 30. US 2000, such an important chart right now. The Australian market's still looking strong. I kind of maintain the same thing here. I think it's looking okay in the face of rate hikes as well. Energy is going to do okay. Also metals, all of those types of things. So it's looking all right on the horizon. Let's move over to the German market and nothing much going on. Still, we expect this is where buyers sit. And of course, this is where the sellers sit at this stage. So it's pretty much around those kind of buyer levels from a technical basis. What about CQQ? Chinese stocks are sitting firm. Nothing much going on with those. They are still really struggling. Let's move over now to the Qs. So we mentioned before that we've got trend lines both ways, and it's not just on the S&P 500. You can see through the back of the Qs here on the 15 minute, we've got the previous kind of periods here. And if we go up to something like a weekly as well, you're going to notice some significant downward trend lines that people are drawing. Specifically, it's the daily chart that I see everyone bringing up. And they're drawing these two particular trend lines because we are semi-trapped between markets. Now, you'll notice I don't use trend lines too often, but I think these are worthy of having. If bulls manage to regain new highs here, it's going to be significant, although 380 is really my main concern for the bears in terms of getting control back of this market. So I think this is going to be a key point for the queues. And we're on the precipice of either breakdowns or breakups. At this stage, though, the bulls are in control of these markets, and that's just shown on some of these timeframes. What about the queues? Everything here matters, 15,200 to 250. Bears sit here, bulls sit here around 14,950. And if they get above, of course, that's going to be super strong bull signal. If they get below, there are a few extra bear sig uh, bull signals still at 14.8, etc. But in general, it's about those Russell 2000. I think that's the one that we should be watching even more closely. Let's have a look at the S&P. This one played out absolutely perfectly. It didn't quite get the gap fill that many were hoping for, which was in here. We kind of expected the 43.30 to 43.40 zone to find bulls over the last 24 hours. And it managed to do so in a big way, even in the fear of the unknown. Notice here, though, this two hour and even daily, we've been unable to clear this zone. So what market area should we be focused on? We should focus on a close above 43.80 as well for bulls to really regain control of this market. It was a strong pickup. Uh, I was very bullish at this stage over the last 24 hours, and that was a nice move you know, leading into this supply over here. For the next 24 hours, it's going to come down to earnings. After the close, we'll find out Vixpiration, we'll find out Tesla and Netflix, and I'm sure we'll see some pretty wild moves each way. As usual, patience, react, don't predict is usually the best concept when it comes to these big earnings, but expect some volatility through Wednesday and Thursday this week just because of the massive options expiration as well. Trillions of dollars and a rising maximum pain. That means that more puts came in over the last 24 hours or at least calls were closed. And you can see 420 remains a huge put wall, 440 on the upside, and we kind of said at the start of this week, we expected the market to stay between 420 and 440. Let's see if that does happen. At the moment, Max Payne sits at 432, but it is rising. We'll continue to update. Make sure to subscribe, follow the channel if you're interested in that stuff. Let's move over to Bitcoin. It is just sitting at this stage after that huge rally to the bear zone of 29,530K. 
And yeah, it's still making a series of higher highs and higher lows. So it looks okay on the charts. I think we'll update after that. Let's scroll down now to everything that's been coming out this week. Fed Chair Powell is speaking Thursday, October 19th at 12 p.m. New York time. That's going to be important. And then we scroll down and we see that it's just really more other countries' information. So it's all down to earnings. Wednesday is the big one. And then Thursday and Friday are all about really Fed Chair Powell and options expiration. Make sure to follow along on the channel, subscribe, smash that alert button, hit the bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.